Hi, good day. It's Stephen Kirsten from the Consolidated Employees Organization down in Cape Town. In today's video presentation, I will be discussing the legal framework regulating the TES, the Temporary Employment Service, client relationship as well as the independent contractor relationship. TES provisions, more commonly known as labor broking arrangements, have been in existence for many years and are not new to South African labor uh, relations. What is new, however, is the relationship, uh, how the relationship is regulated by the LRA. Section 198A of the Labor Relations Act developed significantly over the years and the latest amendments, which became effective in 2015, are still being interpreted by our courts today. In the latest court ruling dealing with the interpretation of section 198A, the court had to determine whether the relationship between CHEP, the client, and C-Force, a service provider, was a TES relationship or an independent contractor relationship, which is what it purported to be. I will refer to this case as the CHEP case. So the background of the CHEP case can briefly, briefly be described as follows. C-Force, the service provider, will provide CHEP with repaired pallets and not with persons to perform work. These services are collectively referred to as reconditioning services. So CHEP essentially outsourced the reconditioning services to C-Force and pays for the refurbished product on a per item basis, as opposed to a worker related basis. The relationship between CHEP and C-Force was regulated by a written contract, a service level agreement in 2009 and a second one in 2014. So 201 are C-Force employees. They referred a dispute to the CCMA where they claimed that they should have been deemed employees of CHEP and not employees of C-Force on the basis that the arrangement between CHEP and C-Force is one formulated on labor broking as defined by the LRA and not a service provider relationship. The commissioner in the case, having regard for the relationship between CHEP and C-Force, agreed that the relationship was a labor broking relationship and that the 201 applicants were deemed employees of CHEP. The Labor Court, however, disagreed and they said that the Commissioner had misguided himself and concluded that this specific relationship was indeed a service provider relationship, an agreement um, and that Section 189A had no uh, application. Last month, the Labor Appeal Court overturned the Labor Court's decision and determined that the relationship was indeed a labor broking relationship. The Labor Appeal Court reiterated that substance over form is essential when determining whether a relationship is one of client uh, service provider or labor broking. Now in the CHEP case, the service being pr performed by Seaforce was an integral to CHEP's, uh, CHEP's operations and the fact that CHEP could um, control the output and the quality of the product was a further indication that Seaforce were doing no more than providing labor for the, to the benefit of CHEP. Now this case highlights the importance of understanding the formulation of um, the relationships and how they apply to section 198A and we encourage our members who may have been involved in similar arrangements to seek guidance on whether the agreement that they entered into will withstand scrutiny. I hope that this video presentation has been beneficial. Thank you.